Hello friends and welcome back to Animal Crossing. I am PG Llama here on YouTube and today we are back on my A Court of Thorns and Roses Island of Valeris. We finally hit three stars just after Nan and Rodeo moved in. So I am finally starting to build. I'm so excited. Mainly I think the focus going forward for this island is going to be builds and villager hunts. I don't see me doing many let's plays because all I want to do is design for this island. So very excited to get started. Today we're going to do the mountains of Valaris. So let's get into the video. So if you guys have been following me for a while, my first island of Wind Lake was where I first kind of had like an introduction to mountains in the game. The theme was based around like a fall winter vibe and I think I leaned more to fall, but I loved both seasons in the game. So I was kind of doing a mixture for a long time. One thing I really strived to create was a mountain, a snow cap mountain in Animal Crossing. And as I'm sure those of you who have also tried know how hard it is to create something like that and actually make it look realistic in some capacity. It is so difficult. I think it was actually one of my first build videos here on YouTube and I did like what I did. I think it was a good experiment and a good chance to figure some things out with it, but it never really satisfied my itch for snow-capped mountains in Animal Crossing. And so I just kind of gave up planning mountains on islands because I just didn't think it was really possible to achieve the vision I wanted. I think Amberino, my second island, was maybe the only other one that I tried to make a mountain range in, but really it was just a sunken waterfall in the quote, snow-themed area of the island. It wasn't anything too crazy. It wasn't the same, it wasn't the same. So starting my ninth island of Valaris, Valaris is a town surrounded by giant snow-capped mountains. So my big challenge from the get-go has been figuring out how to make a snow-capped mountain range. And I've seen islands where they have a lot of perspective builds and you can see things in the shadows of an island and that's incredible. And like, I, I love that perspective of like, you get up on a cliff and across the water is a silhouette of a building or a castle or a city. You know, I've, I've been wanting to do more of those kind of builds because I think they're so unique and to me they, they require a lot of skill. It just seems like the biggest challenge in Animal Crossing is to make those perspective builds that really wow people and that's something I've always wanted to work on. So this island is kind of my first stab at really getting some wow factor on some islands. Like I've really enjoyed all the islands I've made, but I really want this one to be just the coolest one that I feel like I've ever done. Like this, this I want to be the best one I've done. So as much as I think it's gonna take a lot of time to build these things and I might even go back and change things at times, I just wanna go for it and, and figure it out and try to see if we can create something. So while I was planning this island initially before I even started it, I was searching Pinterest and Reddit for ideas because I was like, has anyone figured out how to make mountains look really good in some way on Animal Crossing? So while I was researching, I was on Pinterest initially and it led me to Reddit. I found this post by Spicy P on Reddit about their finished mountains by the water. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is exactly what I wanna do. Like that looks the most realistic. It was just incredible. So that gave me the inspiration to try and figure out how to recreate something similar to really show off the mountains of Valeris. In the description of the book, they have the river that flows through town and then it kind of expands out to sea. So I thought going off a similar concept that Spicy P used, where you have the water kind of opening out at the end for perspective, I thought that was perfect to kind of indicate that it, it goes out to sea. I'm not sure if Spicy P has a spicy switch and that's how it looks so full. I'm really not sure if it was vanilla Animal Crossing or modded but I wanted to give it a shot, give it a try, and see what I could create. If anything, I assumed they may just have way more space to work with than I did. So I just tried to take some tips I could tell with like how they were able to force perspective by using the really small trees and their like first stage of growth 
and then kind of gradually get taller from there. So I tried to utilize that idea for a lot of the builds, but to be fair, what I ended up settling on on Valeris, I don't think, looking back at this now, I don't know if I was even gonna be able to do the level of filling of greenery that they were able to do. I, I'm amazed. Like, I think it might be a spicy switch, but I could be wrong. And maybe they just had a ton of space to work with and they figured it out. But it took me literal days to do all of this. So I'm trying to find a way to concisely put it together. But the idea of these mounds for me was to have it take over the entire back of the island so that when the town area or the house of wind area kind of ends, that's where the mountains begin to kind of just show off like as if everything is within the mountains. So I think it's hard to get a proper perspective of like the town in the mountains, but I'm not sure if I'm going to add it in later, but I did get a bunch of doll houses to try to put around the mountains to make it appear that there's some houses within the mountains too. But I again, don't know if that's gonna be included in this video. If anything, it'll be in the dream address, but that's something I wanted to add as well. I'm all over the place, but <laughs> but to really get started on the perspective, I was trying to lay out everything for the terraforming where there was enough space on each level to host trees and other objects, especially the dormant volcanoes because I just knew that was something I wanted to include to help give the mountain idea, but I wanted to have the non-snowy ones on the bottom and then have the snowy ones at the top to kind of really provide that idea of a snow-capped vibe. I tried to have the space where the water goes out to the ocean is actually where the secret beach is, funny enough, so I thought that kind of worked out pretty nicely, and the perspective really feels like it goes out to the ocean, which is exactly what I was looking for. This main area that I started in the middle was heavily obviously based on Spicy P's work because I felt like I needed to see what I could create based on the pictures and see if I could create something similar to it. It's definitely not as great, but it's still really impressive in its own right. A lot of this building was just growing trees to different levels and changing out which ones I wanted. I wanted to make sure that the cedar trees were the most visible for like the silhouette because then to me that helped create the pointy mountain idea. I liked using the standard trees for just kind of filler and make it feel full and more like a snowbank on the mountain. And then after the trees were put in, I tried to go back and get some bushes to kind of also act as like smaller trees and kind of help with that perspective. I didn't end up doing really any flowers which maybe I should go back and do, but I used the glowing moss as well as regular weeds to kind of add some of that greenery grass to make perspective of maybe even like a smaller part of the forest as it goes on. And then my biggest thing, because it's a city of starlight, I definitely added a ton of the star fragments along each area. I tried to have like probably like every three or so spaces, I'd have a dropped star to kind of give that glow and that fantasy vibe that Valeris really provides. But I do think the hardest thing was figuring out perspectives when you didn't have the water kind of going off into the distance. I made two sets of mountains on either side of the river that went to the ocean and the sets on either side had little dips into the mountain where like the water came in a little bit but there was still mountain throughout the entire view. That was hard to figure out how to create. I still used these smaller trees to kind of add that perspective, but sometimes it looked weird. So I don't know, I'm still working on it, but I think what we ended up with wasn't too bad. It actually gives a better vibe than what I was initially working with on Wind Lake. I really think this took that concept up a level, up a notch. And even though it's not the mountains of my dreams, I think it's pretty well done together and I think it turned out okay. But I think I would have done better had I had more space. I have so many ideas for this island that I can't devote the entire thing to mountains, but, and I, but I still think it's worked out. The dream address for this island is gonna be during the Aurora Borealis because I feel like it kinda helps identify the shadows in the mountains in the back to kind of give that perspective and to really show off the depth of more mountains kind of beyond 
the ones that you see of the trees in front. Otherwise, this night sky will just cover it up and then it all blends in together and it, you just can't see anything. So if I don't do the auroras, I might do like a late sunset vibe, but who knows? But right now the auroras kind of fit for me. I think that's kind of the way to go. I feel like I can't fully break it down for how it was created because it was just playing around and experimenting. It wasn't anything that I had a plan for per se. I was just trying to create. If anything, like each section of each level had a three by three space to be able to put trees down. So that's probably the best advice I could give. But if you have a spicy switch, then that won't matter. I guess I could have also done some of the trees on the edges of the cliff with that little glitch that came out forever ago. But I just didn't feel like dealing with that. I felt like that was just gonna be more trouble than it's worth. But I hope you guys still got some inspiration from it and and can kind of get the same vibe I've been hoping everyone gets when you look up at it. I think one other thing that's important is to get the perspective. You have to make sure that you have enough space between your character and the build, but also be at like maybe the third tier level of terraforming because that just adds a whole other level and like height to it to really make it feel bigger. And then you get that really nice perspective to also really get to see the top levels of the island as it is. What I would give to be able to build on the fourth level and have trees up there, oh, that's, that's something I really wish we could do. But yes, huge thank you to Spicy P. Go check out their work on Reddit. I don't know if they have any other links, if they're streaming or anything, but go check out their page on Reddit. I've linked it in the description below as well as all their stages that they've shared of their builds. Just incredible. So, so incredible. Well, that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you feel like these mountains do Valeris justice, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you did like the video, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. So you can be notified the next time I post. We'll be doing a lot more Valeris builds coming up. The next one will probably be working on the town to change things up a little bit. I'm also going to be making the House of Wind eventually, but it might go in a couple of different stages, but we can talk about that when we get to that video. If you're excited for the next step in Valeris, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastic day. I love you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye.